Good evening, Rabotai. Uh, since we were talking about this topic uh, recently, I wanted to touch on a little bit uh, regarding the issue of idolatry, you know, because we talked about this issue, you know, there are some of these people who are these fanatics, you know, who are preaching all kinds of idolatry and heresy. So, therefore, right, I wanted to touch a little bit on that because the Rambam here talks about this issue, uh, idolatry, you know, and what we as Jews are commanded to do regarding this. You know, what our... What our uh, Obligation is. So it says the Rambam like this. So he says the main commandment when it comes to idolatry, you know, don't serve anything, you know, like which is something that God created. That's idolatry. You know what I mean? In other words, you're, instead of serving God, you're serving somebody who's, you know, not God. That's what it is, right? Basically, right? Something else. So it doesn't matter whether it's, a, whether it's an angel or it's a planet, you know, like some star, you know. And also, none of the creations, you know, some kind of human, animal, you know, whatever, anything like that. Right? This is idolatry, you know. When you say that a human being or an animal is God, you're an idolater. That's what it is. Right, so it says, So it says, so he says, even though, although that this person may know that God above, you know, is the God, you know, but nevertheless, he combines also some service, you know, of some other thing, you know, with that together as a combination, you know, you know, the Trinity, right? That's, uh, things like this, right? Combine this with that, there's this, there's that, there's this, all kinds of things, right? The left side, the right side, the bottom side, and all kinds of things like this. This is what the Torah warned us about that. It says in Deuteronomy, right? Perek Dalet, you said, says, Upenti Sai Necha So it says, Lest you should put up your eyes into the heavens, right? And see some kind of an inanimate object. You know, and say, That's the God, you know, like, you know, the sun is the God. You know, some planet, some. some Whatever it is, right? All kinds of things like this. <coughs> um, so it goes on to say, and so it says that you may think, you know, perhaps lest you think that these things are the things that, which are running the world, you know, these uh, things which are created by God. You may think that they're the God, you know, something that God created. So the word Torah warns you about that, right? Not to get into this, um, you know, this uh, plunter, you know, this kind of, right, uh, it's kind of a black hole somewhere, you know, this, because this is idolatry. And so it says that... Uh, so you may, you may think, right, that these things are gods, but Hashem made them, you know, just for, you know, to, for the world to, to exist as, you know, humanity, mankind, right, nature, right? Don't make these things into gods, because they're not God. I mean, God is God, only God is God. Not the, the things that He created. Don't get confused. Right, so uh, so it says regarding this, he commanded also, right, in Dvarim, Yud Aleph, Hisham Rulachem Peniftel Vabachem, right? You have to guard guard yourself, you know, whether your heart lest your heart stray, you know, to idolatry, you know, some other to wor- to worship some foreign object, which is not God. You know what I mean? That's the thing. You should never think, right, that these things are an intermediary between you and God. There is no intermediary like that. Okay? You go straight to God. You know, you don't need an intermediary. That's right. This is idolatry. Once you make something intermediary b- between you and God, he's like, you know, you go through him, you know, like he's your agent. Moses was an intermediary. Right? No, he was a rabbi. He was a teacher. That's right. That's not the same thing. We don't worship we don't worship Moshe Rabbeinu. You well, know what I mean? Let us uh... Yeah, he was a leader, you know, but leader is one thing, you know. But we don't worship him, you know, it's like, we can only get to God through him. No, we pray directly to God. He's not a God. You know what I mean? He's just a human being. 
He That's what to, it is. He spoke to God for us. Of course, yeah, the, he was a prophet, you know. Uh-huh. But, you know, being a prophet is one thing, being a God is something else, you know what I mean? Two different things. It's not the same thing, right? So, uh, okay, let's go on. So he says, um, so he says, there were a lot of books that was made by adulterers, you know, all kinds of things. New Testament, this, that Testament, right? No Testament, all kinds of things, right? So look what he says, right? This is very important. Because a lot of people tell me, by the way, you know, that they read, you know, these books. You know, this, you know, one person tells me, you know, from our community, I remember like many years ago, he told me, he says, oh yeah, I, I read the New Testament, you know, the No Testament, you know? And I told him, I said, why do you read it? What's, what are you reading it for? So he says, oh, it's, uh, just as, as literature, you know? What do you mean literature? This is not a piece of literature. You know, this is a heresy there, you know, going on. You know, what are you reading it for? So the Rambam right, uh, warns you about that. What does that mean? That Hashem commanded us not to read those books, not to right, delve into other people's religions. This is, this is a heresy, idolatry. So what happens is that one, once you start to delve into it and you start to read it, you know, and the, talk about it and think about it, you know, watch TV shows, you know, 700 Club, all kinds of nonsense like that, right? All kinds of, all that garbage. So what happens is you start to believe in it. You know, that's what happens. It, they brainwash you. You know what I mean? So it's a brainwash, basically. So that's why the Torah commands us not to look into those books. <laughs> so he says, be careful not to seek out their gods, you know, and, and seek out how they worship their gods. What's it to you? What's it to you? What are you, what are you uh, seeking out these things for? Right? Uh, what? You're you looking for trouble? You know what I mean? So the truth is, you know, according to Halakha, there's only one person who's allowed to, um, to, to learn these foreign uh, uh, religions, you know, uh, one, only one kind of Jew. You know what that is? The, which Jew is that? Uh, a rabbi. So what's the purpose of the rabbi? What, the rabbi is above the halakha? He's above, above the law? So no, he's doing it because he wants to refute. You know, like this argument that we said, right? There was a debate that they had, right? So uh, the, he, he refuted the... Um, you know, to, to refute their, their, their false claims, you have to know what they are. You understand? So therefore, the rabbi is allowed to read those things in order to refute them. That's the whole idea. But a person who's just doing it out of curiosity, not allowed to do that, right? Because it's going to influence them. It's going to brainwash them. You know what I mean? It's going to get uh, into trouble like that. Deep order. Okay, so goes on to Rambam. Shelo tish'al al-derecha v'dantam he'achem al-pi she'en ha'shen ha'ta v'dantam. Don't ask about how they do their idolatry, you know, how they do their, uh, right, uh, their uh, all kinds of ceremonies, and, you know, and things like this, you know. It's not for you. What's it your business? What's, what's it there for you to think about these things or to talk about them or to read about them, right? So why is that? What's the reason why it's pro- prohibited to do that? Because if you do it, you're going to start to believe in it, as you, to, to, to actually do it, you know, to practice it. One thing leads to another. Right? So what's going to be? Right? You're going to start to do like they do because they, you got influenced by it. So it says in the, in the Chumash, right? The what? I'll do it also. In other words, yeah, you know, I'll try that. You know, like let me try a little bit of this, a little, you know, a buffet, you know, a smorgasbord, you know. Let me try a little bit of that. Let me try a little bit of this. Let me taste a little bit of that, right? Oh wow, that sounds interesting. You know, let me get that too. It doesn't work like that, right? You have to guard yourself from that. Okay, so it goes on to say, right, the Rambam. So he says, the whole point is, right, that you should not go after idolatry. What does that mean? To study it, you know, and to, to, to seek it out. If he does seek it out, right, uh, you know, and goes after that, those, you know, studying foreign religions, so what's his punishment? He, he gets lashed. We lash him for that. He gets lashes. Uh, so he says, Not only idolatry is forbidden to, to go after that stuff, to read that stuff. So he says the truth is that you're not allowed to read anything which uproots the, uh, the concepts of the Torah, the basic fundamental concepts of the Torah. You're not allowed to read any of that stuff. Doesn't matter whether it's idolatry or it's heresy, you know, or, uh, you know, just basically, you know, like, let's say, for instance, the, the theory of Darwin, right, which is against the Torah. 
You know, so you're not allowed to read that stuff. So that's the thing, you know. It's, it's heresy. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just a theory. Yeah, exactly, you know, because it'll influence you, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, that's what happens. Once you start to read these books, they influence you. So it doesn't, not only idolatry is forbidden to read about, also heresy as well. All types of heresy. Whether it's scientific heresy or, you know, whatever. Right? Well, we can watch Evolution. that debate. We're allowed I'm sorry? to watch that debate. Yeah, well, that's because it's for the sake of education, you know what I mean? That's right. the whole point, right? And by the way, you know, the, truth, the truth is, you know, like you asked me, like, why don't I watch it? The reason I don't watch it is because I don't have any questions about these things, you know what I mean? Mm. So the truth is, you know, who should really watch that? Somebody who's, like, you know, has, has doubts, you know. Oh, and, for entertainment. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Not really for entertainment, you know? It's more like, yeah, I see what you mean, but that's the whole, that's whole idea there, you know? So anyway, let, let's go on. So he says, uh, says the Rambam, so he says, you know what the problem is? That people are, you know, their minds are not perfect, you know, so therefore they can't really get to the bottom of things sometimes. So what happens is that a person gets confused when he starts to read heretical books. He gets confused by that, you know, and uh, he doesn't can't discern between the truth and the non-truth. He starts to get con- confounded. So he says, what's going to be is if everybody's going to go according to his own, you know, his theories and his own, uh, like, theses and all kinds of things like this, you're going to destroy the world like that. What does that mean? Each one is going to have a different religion, a different theory, a different, right, outlook, a different perspective. So what's going to be, you know, for instance, a person gets confused. So sometimes, you know, because he's confused, Sometimes he's thinking about idolatry, you know, thinking about Christianity, you know what I mean? And sometimes he's thinking about uh, the oneness of God, you know, saying Shema Yisrael, Adonai Elohim, Adonai Echad. Which one is it? Decide, you know? Do you believe in the Trinity? Or do you believe that God is one? You can have both ways. You know what I mean? So you get confused, that's what happens. You know what I mean? Once you start to believe in uh, multiple things like this, you want, in the morning you're doing this, in the afternoon you're doing something else, you know what I mean? One foot here, one foot there. <laughs> that's the idea, you know? You don't want that. That's the whole point, right? Okay, so it goes on to say, um, right? Also, now he starts to have doubts about the prophecy. You know, is it really true? It's not true, right? All kinds of things like this, right? It casts doubts into his head when you start to believe in these foreign things and to read them. And also, in the Torah, you know, sometimes he thinks it's from you know, it's from Hashem. Sometimes think it's man-made. You know, a lot of like a lot of people. You know, the foolish people who think you know, Torah is man-made. You know, so they they they're confused. You know, and this causes them to have confusion. They can't get a straight anything straight in their head. You understand? This is the problem. Okay, good. So what's gonna be is right. This confusion. One thing this in the morning, one thing in the afternoon, one thing in the evening. He's going to become a heretic in the end. Why is that? Because he's confused, you know. He doesn't know uh, which is the truth and which is not the truth. You know, so, uh, yeah, this is what happens. The Torah warned us about this, he says. In the Minimar Ba'az, it says in the book of Numbers 15, it says, Don't go after your heart. In other words, don't, don't be seduced, you know, into all kinds of, you know, heresy. You know, and put your heart into it. And in your eyes, don't go after your own theories. And you shouldn't think that you're gonna, because of your you know good minds, you're gonna get to the truth by yourself. You know, just pondering everything and looking into everything. So what does that mean? Don't go after your heart. Don't go after heresy. That's what it means, right? Don't read about heresy. Don't. Uh, don't ponder it. Don't go after your heart. Don't go after heresy. Don't go after heresy. Don't go after so how severe is it if a person believes in the concepts of idolatry, it's like he's denying the whole Torah, you know? Like, that's how they judge him. You know, he's like a total denier. If he, if he doesn't believe in it, you know, and he, and he believes only in the, in the Torah, 
So he's, he, he rejects the idolatry. He's considered to be perfect, right, in his faith. In other words, it's like he keeps, he keep, as if he keeps the whole Torah. I mean, just because he denies idolatry. So I, if you if you if you get into idolatry, and you know, and you delve into it, and you believe in it, it's like you're you're rejecting the Torah totally. That's what it is, right? Total rejection of the Torah. So it says Rambam is considered to be like a goy person like that. You know, a person who starts to believe in that stuff. You know, you're not even considered to be a Jew anymore. It's gone. You know, that's what it is, right? Okay. Um, but whoever rejects idolatry, you know, and right, uh, says that I, you know, doesn't believe in it, that means he accepts the whole Torah. That's so far. Okay. So uh, this is exactly what the Rambam says. Look what it says, right? Yisrael Shabbat Avad Kochavim. A Jew who served idolatry, you know, how does it kavod kochamim and hold the He's considered to be like totally like a goy. Veno kisrael. He's not like a Jew. Shabbat avera, like just a Jew that sinned. It's not like that. You know, there is a Jew that sinned, right? You know, he did some kind of a sin. He's you know, he shaved his face with a razor, you know, whatever. Right? A sin like that, right? Which is more like a, you know, your average garden variety kind of a sin. You know, something like that, right? That doesn't remove you from Judaism altogether. But when you're into idolatry, right? Uh, so he's considered to be like he's totally out of Judaism, totally left. Look what he says, right? Also, the heretics, the Jewish heretics, you know, they're considered to be not Jews. Not only that, look what he says, right? Rambam, unbelievable. He says once they have gone into heresy, you know, people like this. We don't even accept them, you know, to do to, to repent anymore. Can you imagine? Right? That's what he says, right? He says that uh, So you know what it is what's a heretic, right? A person who goes out and says, you know what? This is what I'm doing now, this is not a sin. You know? Totally heres- heretical. In other words, Whatever it says in the Torah, he says, no, that's not a sin. That's nothing. It's, uh, you know, a piece of cake. Don't worry about it. Uh, that's a heretic. So once a person becomes like that, you know, totally like, he's totally removed from, from you know, the concepts of the Torah, the hashkafa, the, the outlook of the Torah, and he goes into heretical, you know, ideas and uh, the concepts in his head. Once he gets that into his head, he's considered to be totally like a goy. So says the Rambam, we don't even accept them if he wants to return anymore. Can you imagine? This is unbelievable. Look what it says. Unbelievable, right? That these heretics, you're not even, even allowed to speak with them. You know? Or to answer them, you know, like, it's not a question. You know, like, they answer you, ask you questions about religion. Don't even answer them. So he says, right, that um, a very strong language he's using over here, right? Don't speak with them and don't answer their questions. In other words, don't get into a discourse with these people. And by the way, this is the, this is the reason why, you know, the Ramban, the Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman, was one of the great Rishonim, the early authorities who lived in Spain. What happened was that the king of Spain came to him, you know, and uh, asked him, you know, if he wants to debate the Christians, you know, to make a debate. So the, initially, the Ramban, you know, rejected this. He said, "No, I don't want to debate any Christians. I'm not interested. Thank you very much." You know, don't get me. Why is that? Because we really should not debate with them, as we said, right? It's it's pointless. It's you know, it's worthless. You know. So what happened was that the king forced him into it. The king said, "You know what? He says if you don't do it, you're going to be in trouble, right? I'm going to hurt you." So he forced him to get into the debate. Otherwise, he wouldn't have gone and gotten into the debate. So the reason why he debated the Christians, the Ramban, is because he had no choice. But if he would have had a choice, he would have avoided it altogether. Okay. Another thing he says, Ramban, right, stressing the point even more, whoever admits, right, that idolatry is true, you know, he believes in the idolatry. 
considered to be like he's disgracing God, you know, insulting God, like, you know, insulting God in his face. So what does that mean? That a person who does this is like, you know, he, it's as if like he, uh, you know, insults God, like, you know, speaks uh, against God. So he says, these two people, right, are considered equal. What does it mean? The one who curses God, the one who disgraces God, and the one who serves idolatry, heresy, these people are the same. They're considered to be the same thing. What does that mean? That they're totally removed from God, totally insulting God, totally disgracing God. This is their, this is their status. Okay, very good. So, the, uh, the Rambam here also right, uh, talks about the issue of, of Christianity you know, uh, in, his, uh, in his works. Mm. So what is he considered to be? Idolatry. That's what he says, right? Christianity is idolatry. So the truth is, you know, that uh, there's a, a sort of a there's sort of a um, contradiction regarding this, sort of a dispute, because there's a tasfot, right? A tasfot, the which is on the Talmud, right? The commentary on Talmud says that you know what he says the tasfot that for goy to, to 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 be Christian is not is not he's not liable for idolatry. So what does that mean? According to according to tasfot, a goy is allowed to serve God through an intermediary. You understand? Yeah. Even though it's not true, you know, it's not true and it's not uh, c- correct. But for them, you know, for their level, this is, you know, what, yeah, exactly, yeah, better than, can. yeah, exactly, better than, uh, better than being a, being a atheist. You know what I mean? That's what it is, right? That's what the Rambam says. Atheist is worse than idolatry. Because at least the idolatry believes in something. You know what I mean? This guy believes in nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay. these are the words of Rambam himself? Yeah. So, the Rambam says Christianity is idolatry. So what does that mean? If a Jew, right, serves Christianity, he's an idolater. So he never specifically said that rumor that's been floating around, where he said it's good that he... he came. Yeah, what that means is that, you know, that they were barbarians, and now they turned, you know, they became somewhat human after that, yeah. you understand? But at the same time... Because Eliel told me that Rambam right. specifically said it's yeah. good that he came. Yeah, no, what, what that means is that, uh, you know, it turned out that they became, you know, they became more, you know, more in tuned with God. So it was you know meant mean? to be that. But, but it's, no, it's not really meant to be, what does that mean? It's not really the proper state. You know what I mean? Just an intermediate state, you know, to get yeah. to, the, to the next level, which is, you know, really to get to the truth. Well, they didn't accept the Torah, right? They exactly, that's the whole thing. They didn't accept the Torah. That's what they have to go through. This, well, they you know, accepted him. Oh, right, they exactly. They accepted him. Right, they, they accepted him, but his Torah is heresy, it's idolatry. You know what I mean? So, but the thing is, like, but they are allowed to do it this way, you know. It says Tosfot, uh, but the Jew who does it this way says the Rambam, he's liable. Mm. What does that mean? He's an idolater. You understand? So, what does that mean? The whole point is like this, right? That if we put these two opinions together, what that means is that the goy, the, the non-Jew, is allowed to serve God through an intermediary, even though it's not true. You know, uh, it's falsehood. But the Jew is not allowed to do that. What's the reason why? Because the Jew is considered to be, uh, like, we, we have a different standard, you know? Have to answer to a higher authority. You know what they say, right? Remember that, right? We answer to a higher authority. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't get to this level. It's, 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 uh, it's pathetic. You know what I mean? But not only that, not only it's pathetic, but it's idolatry for the Jew. So what does that mean? As the Rambam says, right? You're not allowed to make anything in- intermediary. A Jew, you know? If you do that, you're you're an adulterer. That's the thing, you know. Okay, very good. It's interesting. I have a friend that uh, yeah, actually, he said I, he said I I can understand why, you know, Jews refuse to uh, believe. Uh, one of the commandments is thou shalt not have other gods before him. He goes, but I think if you guys did away with that uh, with that commandment, 
you'll be better off. Yeah, of course. Then we'd be like them, you know, yeah. adulterers. Yeah. You know, it's better off. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Very good. I'll put something on this side. Okay. So it says the Ramam like this. If a person makes an idol for himself, even though he didn't make it with his hands, he didn't serve it, okay, he's lashed also with that. In other words, he makes some kind of an idolatrous religion. Because it says, right, don't make anything like that, any, any new idolatrous concept. Oh, so he says, if a Jew makes an, 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 an idol, even though he made it for a goy, he's still lashed, because he made, made an idol. So okay, let's go on. Another thing I want to discuss is like this, right? That uh, there's an issue of making like you know statues. Not for idolatry, but just for beauty. You know, so the question is, is it allowed to do that? Are you going to make, are you allowed to make statues like that? So says the Rambam, You're not allowed to make statues for beauty, even though they're not idolatry. So you shouldn't make it. A Jew should not make any statue. You know, um, So therefore, if you make something like, you know, from gold or silver, it's only for beauty, for aesthetics. Today, she loit ubehen. Atoim beidamu shem avodat kochavim. So therefore, you're not allowed to do that. What's the reason why you're not allowed to do it? But it's not for idolatry. You're gonna make it for idolatry, right? So what's the problem? This is the question. So the rabbis made this decree, you know, not to do it, even for beauty. Why is that? Because if he may come to also be drawn after that, right, make it into an idol. So therefore, the rabbis decreed that uh, a person should not um, make it even for beauty, even for aesthetics, in order that it shouldn't come to idolatry. You know, uh, to avoid that eventuality, that possibility. So look what the Rambam says. So he says, when it comes to beauty, right, aesthetics, the only prohibition is to make an uh, image of a man, of a human. Right? So therefore he says, you're not allowed to make even with wood or with, you know, some uh, limestone, whatever, or with stone, you shouldn't make an image of a man. This is the biggest problem, you know, rabbinically speaking. Even though you're not intending to do idolatry. So the rabbis made a decree like this. What's the purpose of that, of this decree? In order to keep you away from adultery, in order to keep you far away from it, even though that wasn't your intention. So look what he says, right? But he says, this only applies, you know when? When it sticks out. In other words, it's, it's three-dimensional, you know, this, this statue. If you make just a, just a picture... Like a painting, you know, like you know our friend, uh, right? What's his name? Kricheli, right? Kricheli, Roman. What's his name? Okay. Right. So he makes. He doesn't make images. He makes a stat- He makes. Uh, he makes pictures. He makes paintings, right? Paintings is allowed to do. Even if it's a, if it's mankind. So what's not allowed to do? Something three, di- three dimensional, you know, sticks out. The whole body, right? That's the whole thing. Uh, I 
אבל אם הייתה צורה בש... משיקת או צורה של סימנים כגון צורות, אפשר לגבי הלוחות ותבליות, אין צורות השוקלים האלה מותרות. So then it's a lot, as we said, right? If he, uh, if he made it not three-dimensional, just a picture, right, it's allowed. You know, I was asked, by the way, like a couple of years ago regarding this, that sometimes, you know, what happens is, right, that, you know, you know this, right, when, when you go to school, you know, high school and college, right, there's all kinds of sporting events, you know, they get into, you know what I mean? So they, like, if you win, you get a trophy. You know what I mean? Remember we were in the uh, music thing? Right, the music contest, right? They were giving trophies also there. You know, first place, second place, all kinds of stuff. So the question is, if that trophy has an image of a man, right, the uh, whole body, let's say, right, are you allowed to keep that trophy or not? That's the question, you know? It's not for idolatry, you just you want a contest. You want some kind of a sporting event, you know? That's something else, right? So the truth is that... Um, It says in the Shulchan Aruch that it's allowed to keep that. What's the reason why? Why are you allowed to keep that? Because you didn't make it. The, right, the whole prohibition over here, the Rambam is talking about making it. Uh, that's a very different issue, right? As a Jew, you're not allowed to make the, 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 the image yourself. But As you we said, right? you can buy a statue? It's three-dimensional. You, I'm sorry? You can buy a statue and bring it home. Right, so, yeah. I mean, you know, this one you got for free. It doesn't really matter if you paid for it or not. That's not the issue. But the issue is that it's not for idolatry. You know what I mean? And it's just for aesthetics. And um, you didn't make it. So in a case like that, you know, you're allowed to have it you know, in your house. That's not really a problem. That's what, that's what it says in the Shulchan Aruch, you know? So uh, this, is the, this is the rule, you know? So basically, as we said, the rule is, you know, to get all, everything down. The only prohibition of making these statues, of course, if you made it for idolatry, for sure it's forbidden, right? You're let from the Torah. But the rabbis also forbade to make statues for aesthetics if they're three-dimensional, you know, uh, to make them. But if you didn't make it, somebody else made it, you know, some goy made it, right? And you just, like, won that trophy, whatever, right? Or whatever, something like that. You're allowed to keep that in your house. Yeah. This, by the way, also leads to another question, you know, which a lot of people ask, which is, what about to buy a doll, you know, for your daughter, you know, let's say, you know, buy her a toy, you know? It's, it's like an image of a human being. A doll, you know, with the whole body, the complete body. Three-dimensional, right? All dolls are three-dimensional. Right? So what about that? Right? So the answer is the same thing as what we said with the trophy, right? The answer is that you're allowed to, to keep that, right? Like a doll like that. Because you didn't make it. It was made by, you know, Hasbro or, you know, some company, right? Whatever it is, right? Those toy companies. Uh, they, made, they made that doll. So there's no problem with that. You didn't make it. And number two, your intention is not for idolatry, right? You just, your daughter just wants to, you know, feel like a granny, you know, or some kind of mother, you know, whatever. Play with that, play that game. So that's okay, you know, that's not really a problem. Uh, your intention is not idolatry, you didn't make it, so therefore in a case like that, it's allowed. But, as we said, right, that uh, otherwise, you, you should not make it yourself. So what does that mean? A Jew should not have a company, you know, like some kind of... Uh, some kind of uh, right, factory, you know, that makes images like that. He should not be in, in, producing things like this. To produce them is not allowed. Sometimes the prohibition is from the Torah, sometimes the prohibition is from the rabbis. Either way, right, you're not allowed to produce them. That's what the rabbis said. So, uh, that's the way it works. Okay, very good. What about the issue of the cross, right? You know, the... Uh, You know, we have in our community a lot of jewelry people, right? So they sell jewelry. So the famous question is always, am I allowed to sell a cross, you know, or something like that, right? So the answer is, the truth is, you know, the Ramah already wrote, writes about this in the Shulchan Aruch. It says the Ramah that you're allowed to sell crosses, you know, in your jewelry store. What's the reason why? Because the, the cross is not really an idol. Mm. You know what I mean? So what does that mean? You don't worship the cross. Yeah. You know what I mean? Jwari, yeah. Jwari, you know. <laughs> we, have, we have funny names in the Georgian about these things. So, uh, you know, you're not, you're not worshiping it. It's just, so what is it for then? It's just a reminder, you know, more like a reminder, you know, like, in other words, a person who wants to think about that, you know, be a psychopath and, you know, think about it, whatever, right? That's, you know, of course, a Jew shouldn't be thinking about things like this. But we're talking about, you know, you're selling it to a goy, right? So what's it your business? What do you care about that? You know what I mean? If he wants to think about it, that's his business, as we said, right? 
they're allowed to think about this nonsense. You know what I mean? They're, for them, it's okay, you know? So, uh, therefore, <laughs> they're allowed to think about their trinity, right? Whatever, right? All, all that garbage, right? So they're allowed to think about it, even though it's not true. But, because uh, it feels, it makes them feel, you know, they have some kind of a, some kind of, you know, connection with God, or whatever. Right? The truth is, you know, Zerah Kadosh, by the way, talks about this, you know, that because then the connection that they have with God, you know, the the Goim, you know, is like, is in a very impure way like this, you know. So th- the connection is really coming through the Satan, from the back door, you know what I mean? They're not coming from the front door. The front door is only when you worship God without any intermediary. You go straight to God, you know what I mean? You don't go, go through intermediary. Then you're going to the front door, the side of holiness. When you're going, when you're going to an intermediary, right, 700 Club, you know, all that garbage, right? You're going through the back door. So what does that mean? You know what it is, right? We talked about this one time, but I want to reiterate this again, again one more time because it's very relevant to this discussion. That um, what happens is like this, right? That there's two ways to get to God. There's from the good side and the evil side. You know what I mean? And there is an evil side which is close to being like, close to holiness, not too far away, you know? So a person can make a mistake and think, oh, you know what? That's holy. You know, but it's not. When you're going through the back door, you know, to, with the intermediary, there's no holiness there. It's just it's all impure. I mean, that's how you're connecting to God. You know, so this connection is very inferior. Obviously, you're going through the back door. So that's the thing, right? Why is a Jew not allowed to be connect that way? Because a Jew, you know, being a, that he's a holy soul, coming from the side of holiness, he cannot go through the back door. You know what I mean, he cannot be a back door man, right? That's no way to. Uh, there's no way to be like that. You know, within, the Jewish people, like since the Jewish people are elevated and holy, chosen, the ones you know who are supposed to serve God the way He wants, not the way they want. As one wise person said, you know, uh, right? He said, "What's the difference between Judaism and, 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 and Judaism and uh, Christianity?" You know, Judaism is the service of God the way He wants to be served. You know, so it was a religion created by God to serve Him. But Christianity, right, what, what is that? It's not created by God. It's a, it's a religion created by man, right, to, to, uh, to, serve, to, to, to serve God the way he wants. You know what I mean? So what does that mean? It's, it's not the will of God. It's the, it's the will of man. It's, 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 it's a fundamentally different thing. You understand? Judaism is you're serving the God the way he wants. Christianity is that what? You made the God to serve, you know, God that you're, you're, you're the way you want. This is not the way you serve God. <clears throat> so therefore, what do you see from there? One more thing, right, we have to stress over here, which is that <coughs> a person is not allowed to talk about these things and study them, you know, these concepts of heresy and idolatry. Not allowed to get into it, not allowed to talk about it, not allowed to read about it, not allowed to educate himself about that, take courses on it, watch TV shows, right, anything like that, right, these evangelist, you know, shows, all kinds of stuff. Not allowed to watch those things. Some people tell me, you know, when we were kids, we used to watch them, you know, because uh, we didn't know, like, what it was, you know, so, like, it was the only connection we had to religion, because, you know, we, we weren't going to a synagogue, we didn't, you know, sometimes it's true, by the way, you know, but if a person, once a person knows, right, that that's not the real way, you know, and he knows that this is the falsehood, so you should, you should not get into that, right, watch falsehood, you know, and uh, all that nonsense, right, that goes on there, I mean, why is that, because the, the rabbi said, Shani minut, the, 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 uh, right, the, 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 the moshech. You know what that means? The heresy is very difficult. You know why? Because it pulls your heart. It seduces people, you know? It's very seductive. It's very, you know, uh, tempting. Heresy, you know? That's why a person has to stay away from it. Not to study it, not to learn it, not to talk about it, not to think about it, not to read about it, any of that stuff, right? Not to get into that stuff. That's not, that's not our portion. Our portion is straight to God, right? No intermediary, right? No, no other uh, objects in, the, in between us and God. We go straight to Him. Baruch Thanks for coming. Amen. Be blessed with wealth, health, and happiness. Amen, amen. And uh, a straight connection with God, with no intermediaries. Amen, amen.